What is good, YouTube? Quinn Wade, basketball analysis coming to y'all with that hot topic. We're going to talk about Rick Carlisle signing the extension. As you guys know, last year, the Indiana Pacers fired um, Nate McMillan to hire Nate Bjorken. And after one season, they had a lot of problems with him with the players. They had a lot of problems with him in the locker room and his coaching style. They fired him after one season, and now they're going to go with a legend, a champion as a coach, Rick Carlisle, who just was coaching Luka and helped him make the playoffs two years in a row. Now he goes to an interesting team in Indiana that has some good pieces. This is a playoff team if healthy. If they have T.J. Warren, if they have guys like Miles Turner being healthy the entire season, same with Karis LeVert missing some time. This is a legitimate playoff team, and they have a lot of interesting pieces. Obviously, they're trying to get over the hump and bring a championship to Indiana. And I think Rick Carlisle is probably better than Nate Bjorken at this point. He has been one of the best adjustment coaches, has been one of the best offensive coaches, one of the best innovative coaches in the league, despite how long he's been in the league. He has been highly respected for his coaching, and he deserves it. I always thought Rick Carlisle was a great coach. I didn't expect him to leave Dallas, but he leaves Dallas to get a fresh start with Indiana. And Indiana is a team that has a lot of talent. It's just about getting over that hump and bringing a championship. I think that if you can get a guy like, a guy like Rick Carlisle, you definitely do it. Um, it seemed like they didn't really know who they was going to go with. It seemed like they didn't really know what coach would be the right fit after they just fired one coach after one season already. And once Rick Carlisle became available, they knew exactly who that guy was because he's just that good of a coach. And I don't really think Nate Bjorken was a terrible coach last year. I just feel like the injuries really destroyed the roster and the injuries really destroyed any chances of them being a legitimate contender in the East, as a lot of this team, even last year, dealt with a lot of injuries, and they traded Victor Oladipo, who was a huge part of their foundation a couple years ago, was gone, and then they had to integrate Kyrus LeVert within the system without having all their guys healthy anyway. So this team is going to have a fresh start, and they're really going to have a chance to really see what they got and, and really get a chance to see a lot of their players unlocked a lot more behind Rick Carlisle. So I think this is a great move. Um, it makes a whole lot of sense. And Rick Carlisle is a guy that's loyal. If you do him right, you put the talent around him, he'll be patient if you need to do it. He also can coach at the highest level when you have the talent and the right players with him. And he is a guy that will be steady and he will demand excellence and he will, you know, make the adjustments that's necessary for you to win series and now they just have to figure out what are they going to be because this team really wanted to go run and gun then they wanted to go small then they really wanted to go through Sabonis then they really didn't know what they was going to do with Oladipo that he wanted out so they really got to find out who really wants to be here who really wants to buy into this team and once they figure that part out everything should be smooth selling because I feel like a lot of these guys are tired of being here. A lot of these guys really don't want to be here. And some of the guys that do, they just need to be healthy. And, you know, I can see this team taking a step in the right direction next year once they figure out who's here, who's in, and let's go and get this thing done. Once they figure out those steps, I think that this team can be very dangerous um, under Rick Carlisle. And they already showed that, you know, that they can be a tough team to defend. They can be a tough team to score on when they have all their guys ready. And that's the type of team that you want to go to with Rick Carlisle because we didn't look at the Dallas Mavericks under Luka as a legitimate championship team. We looked at them as a team that can make it to the playoffs. We looked at them as a team that can win a series. But they wasn't a team that was ready to compete for a title currently constructed and we all felt that way the last two years and they've been a first round exit the last two years indiana they're one superstar away with the type of role players that they have and this type of stars that they have for being a legitimate team in the east and they have already shown that they can be one of the better teams in the east it's just not one of the best teams in the east when it comes to being a legitimate championship threat 
but they have all the necessary pieces to be able to get over that hump. If the right guy becomes available, they have the assets and the personnel to make a trade like that happen. It's just about getting them to come and wanting to come to Indiana. And I don't really know if they changed their culture enough for that to happen, but Rick Carlisle definitely helps with that as he's respected among players too as a coach. So it's going to be interesting to see what Indiana does and what they're trying to do and who they really trying to ride with and same with the players that's on this roster and they they really can go in a lot of different directions they can go big they can space the floor they got multiple guys that can handle the ball and make plays whether that's inside or out and they actually have a solid bench already they're going to have to figure out who they want to pay because financially it's going to be hard to keep this team together once the contracts start coming up and even if they do come up are these the guys that you feel you can get the job done with um if you do decide to want to keep them and it is certain guys on this team offensively that can really use a bump and really can use a higher level of a role and we'll see if rick carlisle can find some untapped potential and bring it out of a lot of these guys because they have a lot of c B players, they don't have enough A players, and that's just something that happens when you're Indiana. You have to either draft them or get them in free agency, but how many times do you see a big-name free agent wanting to literally go to Indiana? That's basically never happened, and I don't really see that more or less changing right now, but Sabonis has shown that he can really be a high-impact guy being able to score from the mid-range, being able to be a good free-throw shooter, being able to be a great passer and playmaker. They definitely got something special there. Karis LeBert has shown that he can be a guy that can be a great ball handler and a great scorer, but he hasn't really did it consistently in his career. Plus, he can continue to have injuries that take him out of big portions of seasons. And TJ Warren, who was on on pace to be an all-star caliber player, in Indiana missed basically the whole entire year and you really wanted to see what he can do especially how he was playing in the bubble um you wanted to see can he take that to another level where he can really show an uh, increase you know role but they never really got to see that happen as he couldn't stay healthy and he was out so this team has a lot of interesting guys this team has a lot of you know talent it's it just about getting the best out of it and putting the right team um, around um, Sabonis, who is their best player in the two-time All-Star. And, you know, I don't look at Sabonis as a one. I look at Sabonis that as a guy that can be your third best player, a guy that can play well off the others and make a lot of guys around him better with his unselfishness. But he, he scores depending on the matchup. He's not really a dominant scorer. He's not really a go-to, give me a bucket every time scorer. Um, and I don't think he will be. So I look at him as more of a second, third banana with a high, high level point guard or a, a, a high level guard um, in general, unless you can find a small forward um, that can really play defense and score at the same time, which isn't really that many in the league. But uh, you got to get your hands on a superstar. And that's what, you know, with the talent they have right now turn them into a legitimate force in the East. And we already know they're respectable. We already know that a lot of these guys play well with each other, play well off of each other. And a lot of these guys aren't afraid of playing that second or third, you know, role um, if you get the right guy to come in here. So it's going to be tough. um, But if they stay with it and continue to build the right culture, really continue to build – a great environment and, and continue to win, they have their chance, you know, to get to that elite status. But they also are not in the worst situation either, honestly and truthfully, especially with them missing the playoffs this year. They can get a, a solid pick where they can either move up by trading other guys with that pick or they can get another great foundational piece that possibly can be specialized. This is a pretty deep draft with a lot of great supporting cast guys early in it. And with them having one of those picks, they can really add a solid piece to this already great core 
that they have already established um, in Indiana. So getting Rick Carlisle is a huge deal. It's a huge step forward for Indiana, and this is the right move. This is one of the best coaches you can get. Um, really wasn't even supposed to be available, but they showed the urgency that they wanted him, and they got him. $29 million, four years committed, and he seems like he's interested, and he really want to you know, dive into this roster and see what he can really do. And I can't wait to see what this Indiana team do in the offseason, what they do in the draft, and see who they got ready to go to war for them when the season starts. So if you're an Indiana fan, you should be happy. You should be ecstatic that you got one of the top 10, top seven coaches in the world um, now, which you didn't have before. Um, and you also have one of the teams that have a lot of talent. So even if you don't get that superstar, y'all going to be competitive. Y'all going to be tough to beat. Um, and y'all might even have a new look too going into the season. And that should give you reasons to be excited now, um, compared to how, how the season went and, and compared to how it ended. This is something that can make you smile and get happy and, and be ready to see what the future holds. So Indiana fans, you'll have your heads down. Keep your head up now. And these next two to three years should be very fun for y'all. So it's going to be exciting. It's going to be crazy. And we, we'll see if Indiana can bring a championship to, to Indianapolis. And that should be exciting, you know, in the next four years that y'all got Rick Carlisle possibly if he does stay and doesn't get fired like he just in, in a New York and in a, in a Miller. Other than that, I'll be coming to y'all later with that um, Phoenix versus Clippers series. CP will be back. That gives y'all a reason to stay tuned, subscribe, and, and, and y'all should be excited about that. Other than that, Quinn Wade basketball analysis signing out, and I'll be coming to y'all the video later. Um, see y'all soon.